Hi, I'm Elliot, and I'm going to be talking about Livia, our system for data center computing throughout the memory hierarchy. This work was done with my co-authors at CMU and MIT. Livia addresses issues of data movement. Many common workloads like trees and linked lists don't perform well on current systems because their unpredictable accesses lead to excess data movement, which dominates time and energy. Our solution is data center computing throughout the memory hierarchy. Our hardware, software, co-design system can offload entire user-defined high-level operations to execute near data wherever data naturally settles in the memory hierarchy. We introduce the memory services programming model, which allows programmers to write tasks that are associated with data, and the Livia architecture, which schedules and executes tasks near data automatically. Together, this gives a speed up of up to 2.4 times and energy savings of up to 4.7 times with a traditional CPU. We'll start with a case study of a typical irregular application to understand the issues at play and how we address them. Then we'll look at the memory services API and the Livia architecture. We'll evaluate Livia and finish with some future work. Let's start by looking at a binary search tree. This is a representative workload that experiences the kinds of issues Livia addresses. To walk your search tree, you start at the root, and at each point, you choose a child node until you reach a leaf. As we'll soon see, workloads like this are dominated by data movement. So the first question is, how should we map this tree to the memory hierarchy? Well, we start at the root each time, and levels of the tree near the root are much smaller than those near the leaves. So nodes near the root have much better locality and should be near the core in the L1 and L2. Levels further away should be placed in the L3, and levels near the leaves with the least locality should be in memory. Now that we know how to lay out the data, we'll next figure out how efficiently we should be able to execute, then see our current systems fall short, and finally see how Livia gets close to the ideal. So what's the ideal latency? Well, you can't do better than traversing the memory hierarchy, accessing each node where it currently resides. To understand this latency a little better, we developed an analytic model based on a 64-core system. We can see the latency broken down into the core, which isn't included in ideal, L2 and LLC cache accesses, and memory, with network latency indicated with shading. Most of the time is spent in the LLC and memory, with a significant fraction in the network. Overall, ideal takes an average of 600 cycles to walk the tree. So now that we've seen the ideal latency, Let's see how some current systems compare. A traditional CPU can only execute in the core, so data needs to be brought back to the core so it can be processed. This is okay for the L1 and L2, but for lower locality data in the LLC and memory, this leads to significant overhead. As you can see, CPU takes almost twice as, over twice as long as ideal, and most of the added latency is in the network. Some recent research systems address this by moving execution to the memory controllers, which we'll call processing in memory, or PIM. Unfortunately, these systems struggle to exploit locality. Every access that was a cache hit for the CPU becomes a DRAM load, and DRAM loads are very expensive, so PIM takes almost five times as long as CPU. More recently, there have been proposals for hybrid CPU PIM systems. These execute in the CPU for data on chip, but in the memory controllers for data in DRAM. As you can see from the LLC network latency, hybrid still produces too much data movement, taking 1.8 times ideal, which is only a small improvement over CPU. Now let's see how Livia gets close to ideal. Livia is able to offload entire high-level operations, in this case the tree lookup, to execute in the memory hierarchy. It does this by breaking an operation into tasks, each of which executes near the data it needs. This means for data in the L1, it executes in the main core. For data in other caches, it executes nearby, be it in the L2, LLC, or in the memory controllers, wherever the data resides. So Livia basically follows the ideal path we saw before. The end result is Livia gets within 20% of ideal with a nearly two times slowdown for the prior state of the art. As you can see, Livia only really adds latency to execute tasks, which we didn't include in the ideal model. 
Now that we've seen how Livia can migrate execution to data, this introduces three big questions. First, how can we let the programmer write tasks that are, that are associated with data? Second, how do we design an architecture that schedules and executes tasks near data automatically? And third, how does data get into the caches in the first place? Let's start with the first question. How do we let the programmer write tasks that are associated with data? To do this, we introduce an API we call memory services. We'll start with a traditional C function for walking a binary tree and convert it to a memory services task step by step. The lookup function takes a node pointer and a desired key. If the node and key match, it returns the node. Otherwise, it recurses on the left or right child. Let's start our conversion with the function signature. Every task takes a pointer as its first argument. This pointer is very important because its value at runtime will be used by the Livia architecture to schedule the task in the memory hierarchy. In this case, it's a node pointer, same as the original CPU function. Next, because the task may execute far away from the original application thread, we can't return values through registers like a C function return. Instead, as the second argument, tasks take a future. This works like a future in a regular asynchronous programming interface. It represents a value that's not yet available. Finally, a task can take a number of user-defined arguments, in this case, the desired key. As before, we check if the node and key match. If they do, we need to fill in the future, making it available to the application. To do so, we use ms send. Otherwise, we recurse. If we called lookup like a normal function, it would execute locally. Instead, we use ms invoke to request that the system schedules the task to execute near the child node. ms invoke takes a task function, some flags, in this case zero, and the task's arguments. Calling ms invoke recursively like this dynamically creates the task graph like the one we saw earlier. To use the task from the application, you create and initialize a future, call ms invoke, and wait for the result. Now let's look at how we implement the memory service API with the Livia architecture. We introduce two new instructions. The first is invoke. Invoke looks a lot like a call. It takes a function and you place the function's arguments in registers. Invoke actually has predicated function call semantics. If data is available locally, invoke becomes a call and execution proceeds. Otherwise, the system marshals the task pointer and arguments and sends them to, to be executed near data. The second instruction is store update. Similar to some previous proposals, this sends a message to a core to perform a store of a particular value to a specific address. Anything you can do with store update could be done with a regular store, but this would incur additional overhead. With these new instructions, implementing the memory services API is pretty straightforward. MS invoke is a wrapper around invoke instruction. MS wait spins on the future, and like other synchronization primitives, can yield to other threads or quiesce the core. MS send fills in the future through memory using store update to avoid unnecessary coherence traffic. The API does have some limitations. Currently, we only schedule tasks near a single piece of data. Because we don't have any compiler support, it requires a few lines of inline assembly. We'll get back to this at the end when we talk about future work. Switching to the microarchitecture, we start with a traditional tile CMP, where each tile has a core, a private L1 and L2, and a slice of the shared LLC. To this, we add a memory services element, which consists of a Livia controller and an execution engine, where the engine can be an inert or core or an embedded FPGA. Let's start by looking at the Livia controller. The controllers coordinate across the CMP to schedule tasks. When a controller determines it should run a task, it starts execution on its engine. Let's go through a few examples of the scheduling process to understand how it works. In general, task scheduling follows the normal coherence lookup path. So if data X is in the first core's L1 and the first core executes an invoke instruction on X, it'll probe the L1, find the data, the invoke instruction will become a call, and execution will proceed locally. Let's see what happens if data Y is in the first tile cell 3 slice, and the second core executes an invoke instruction on Y. Well, following the normal coherence lookup path, it'll probe the L1, see the data isn't present, 
probe the L2 and again see the data isn't available. We'll then forward the request to Y's home L3 slice, where we'll find the data and execute nearby. Now let's look at a slightly trickier example. What if data Z is in the second tile's NUMA domain and the third tile's engine executes an invoke instruction on Z? First, it forwards the request to Z's home L3 slice. When it sees that Z isn't there, it forwards it to the second tile's memory controller where it will execute. So we've seen how Libya can migrate execution to data. But if it did this every time, there would be no way to bring data into the caches so that we could exploit locality. Therefore, at each step in the scheduling process, with a small probability epsilon, we choose to execute a task even without data, bringing the data into the caches. Let's see how this works. Same scenario, Z is in the second tile's new domain, and the third tile's engine executes an invoke instruction on Z. It forwards the request to Z's home L3 slice. But now, with a small probability, it'll execute the task even without data, loading the data into the cache. We find that in the steady state, the simple stateless policy does a good job of approximating the ideal data layout for our regular workloads. So that's the gist of how Livia schedules tasks and brings data on chip. For more information on the corner cases, please see the paper. Switching gears to the execution engine, we explored two options, a small integer core and an embedded FPGA. The core is simpler and has a lower barrier to entry, while the FPGA is higher performance and takes less energy. To ease programming, we generated the bit streams for the FPGA with high-level synthesis. Choosing the FPGA creates a unique hybrid CPU FPGA architecture in which tightly integrated FPGAs are distributed in a sea of memory. With either option, the engine has a small L1 TLB and a coherent L1 cache. Altogether, we estimate that Livia adds less than 3% area overhead on top of the baseline CMP. Now, in terms of how these engines interact with the rest of the system, engines generally provide tasks with the same view of memory as regular threads. This means they experience all the same data races and have all the same synchronization primitives to deal with them. In order to simplify the engines, we handle exceptional events by migrating the task to the local main core, which means we can use all of the existing machinery to handle these rare events. In terms of configuring the engines, on the in-order core side, instructions are loaded through normal fetches, and this course is amortized over many task executions. On the FPGA side, we currently model a system where the FPGAs are configured when the programs are loaded and also amortized over many task executions. This is okay because our tasks are so small that even a teeny FPGA can support 10 core running applications. There still is some interesting work to be done in system integration. We'll come back to this when we discuss future work. Now let's look at how Livia performs. To evaluate Livia, we wrote a cycle level simulator with out of order cores based on Goldmont. We characterized FPGAs with Vivado HLS and PTR. We evaluated the five systems we saw in the motivation, a traditional CPU, PIM, which executes on the memory controllers, hybrid PIM, which behaves like a CPU for data on chip, but like PIM for data in DRAM, and the software core and FPGA versions of Livia. We implemented four irregular workloads as memory services, a lock-free lookup AVL tree, which is similar to the search tree we saw in the motivation, a linkless benchmark that models a hash table implemented with separate chaining, a graph application page rank, and the Patricia Consumer Queue, which is often used as a primitive in multi-thread applications. In this talk, I'm going to focus on the AVL tree since we've already seen how it works in detail. Here, we looked at the average time to walk a 512 megabyte AVL tree on a 64 tile system with a 32 megabyte LLC. The graph has a bar for each system, showing the average tree walk time on the y-axis and the speed up versus CPU in the text above the bar. PIM took significantly longer than CPU because of all the additional DRAM loads it creates due to its inability to exploit locality. Hybrid PIM is slightly faster than CPU because it avoids some cache pollution. That is, it doesn't evict high locality data from caches to insert low locality data from DRAM. Both Livia systems see significant speedups of 54% and 69% because Livia follows the ideal lookup path, migrating execution to data. FPGA sees additional benefit from accelerating the execution itself. Let's look at the latency breakdown to see where these speedups come from. Here, we've broken down the time to do a lookup into execution time and the time accessing the L2, the LLC, and memory. 
the breakdown confirms what we saw in the motivation. CPU spends a huge amount of time in the LLC, and while PIM avoids this, it produces a tremendous increase in DRAM accesses. Hybrid PIM produces a small improvement, but because it behaves like a CPU for data on chip, it doesn't help much. In contrast, Rivium migrates tasks to the right LLC bank, having network latency for the LLC. If we switch to dynamic energy, we can see a similar gain. Note that the reduction of network energy is even greater than of network latency. This is because while latency is only affected by operations on the critical path, energy is also affected by other operations, primarily evictions, which Livia reduces by avoiding cash pollution. Briefly looking at other workloads, we see similar speedups. Linked list is up to 91% faster, page rank up to 51% faster, and the producer consumer queue up to 94% faster. We also did a large number of sensitivity studies, varying system size, input size, network congestion, Livia design parameters, and more. And the takeaway is Livia's benefits hold. So we've seen that Livia gets big speed ups on challenging workloads. Well, what's next? Well, there are three main areas in which we're looking to improve on the current system. The first is applications. As previously mentioned, we currently schedule tasks based off a single piece of data. We'd like to extend this to scheduling tasks based off multiple pieces of data because some applications rely on operations that, are, that fundamentally require multiple inputs. More broadly, we envision Livia becoming a general purpose accelerator for regular workloads. This can include system tasks like garbage collection, long running tasks like application specific cache compression, or just a general accelerator for apps like graph analytics. On the programming side, we currently require a few lines of handwritten assembly, but plan to introduce compiler support both to, both to obviate this need and allow for additional optimization of tasks. We're also going to explore options to make tasks easier to write, perhaps with an OpenMP or Silk style interface. Finally, we're going to more fully explore system integration with improvements to core microarchitecture in areas such as integration to the pipeline, detailed OS support for things like virtual memory, and a better Livia microarchitecture, exploring engines such as CGRAs and better methods to warm up the caches. In conclusion, Livia significantly accelerates irregular workloads by reducing data movement through migrating computation to data throughout the memory hierarchy. This reduction in data movement also considerably reduces energy, all while requiring only minimal additional area over a baseline system. So thanks for listening, and please contact us if you have any questions or comments.